You sent Sir Arik to slay Rhaenyra. Alone? He's pretending to be his own twin. Brilliant. God's help us all. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Episode 2 is over and both Damon and Otto are on the outs. I'm going to discuss this and the other big moments in what was a strong episode with good character development. Let's start with Otto, whose underestimation of Aegon led to him being removed. He acted more as a grandfather than a hand. He was blunt, cutting, and he said all the things that he knew would hurt Aegon the most. Instead of judgment, you display impetuousness and diminish us in the eyes of our enemy, ill-considered, trifling. He was right about you. He made me king. <laughs> Is that what you think? Was he right in most of these things? Yes, but Otto has often had a problem with reading the room. His heavy-handed behavior forcing houses to swear allegiance to the new king after Aegon's abrupt coronation showed the realm the sort of rule to expect from the Greens. And here, after seeing what Aegon did, executing all the rat catchers on his own and then following psychopath Kristen Cole's plan to get Rhaenyra on Dragonstone, Otto should have seen that Aegon was desperate. Otto himself said to Aegon's face that Westeros saw him as weak. Well, now he's trying to remedy that. Is it in a constructive manner? Of course not, but Otto failed to see that after making so many rash choices, Aegon could just as easily remove him as hand. And Otto was actually even surprised when it happened. And while I'm not an apologist here for Aegon, he's done despicable things, it's clear what the root cause of his problems are. He changed his mind. Wow. <laughs> he could have, but he never did because he didn't like me. Uh, you're your father's daughter. Do you love me? You're imbecile. The lack of caring he received from his parents has shaped and damaged him. Just look at the contrast in how better adjusted Rhaenyra's children are than Alicent's. One of the most telling moments in the episode was when Alicent walked in on Aegon mourning the loss of his son. Rather than comfort him, she walked back out the door, leaving him alone. What's even more tragic about Aegon's story is that he just wanted to be left alone. He even had the self-awareness that he shouldn't be king. I have no wish to rule, no taste for duty. I'm not suited. You get no argument from me. But both his grandfather and his mother forced him into it. Now with his young son brutally murdered, the one thing that gave Aegon joy, he's understandably looking for vengeance, and Alicent and Otto failed him again. Damon's situation is different. He's stronger than Aegon, yet he always carried resentment toward Viserys for not giving him the respect and consideration that he felt he deserved as his brother. Damon thought he should be hand to Viserys, and with the way things turned out, he was right. The succession was botched due to poor leadership on Viserys' part, and if you had Damon there instead of Otto, it's highly unlikely that a civil war breaks out. Whereas Aegon seeks love, Damon is primarily looking for respect, and appreciation. Time and time again, he's shown his loyalty to his family, but he feels he doesn't get it in return from them. And this drives him to do some impetuous things. And like with Aegon, this doesn't excuse some of his behavior, but he's also been mishandled by those closest to him. Whether she really feels it or not, it's not smart for Rhaenyra to tell Daemon that she doesn't trust him. He's one of the most important weapons she has in this war, and the only real counter to Aemond and Vagar. For her to just nonchalantly tell Damon's daughter, Bela, that Damon might be gone for a week or possibly forever shows a lack of foresight and an understanding of what will be required to win this war. Of course, she shouldn't be happy with a young boy being killed so horrifically instead of Aemon, but even if she doubts Damon is telling her the truth, the best thing is just to let it go. This also didn't happen in a vacuum. It came on the heels of Lucerus's brutal, inexcusable death. I thought this episode did an excellent job of portraying the parallels of both Otto and Damon being on the outs and how poorly these events were handled by those involved. The fight between the twins, Eric and Eric, 
was a microcosm of what we're seeing play out in the overall battle of the Blacks versus the Greens. And it was filmed so well from the tension of the two, both being in Dragonstone at the same time, and the audience not knowing which brother was which. Watching it made it confusing, but in a good way, because it added to the impact of the moment. It was powerful and well executed. I also liked the way they tied in Kristen Cole's own guilt for the death of Jaharis and how he took it out on Eric to not just change his white cloak, but to prove his own loyalty. Cole is one of the most despicable people on the show, surpassed only by Laris, who had his family killed, and Cole here manipulated Eric in a loathsome way to send him on a suicide mission. On the unseemly side was Otto's decision to have Jaharis' body publicly displayed to the people. This did further damage to Helena, who is feeling alone and trapped. Another well-delivered scene was when Helena passed Aegon within the Red Keep, and he completely ignored her. And this, I felt, was heartbreaking on both ends, mostly for Helene, of course, but it also shows how Aegon, who hadn't received caring or compassion from his parents, can't show it to his wife now that his son is gone. It's tragic how broken the children of Alicent and Viserys are. Even Aemond, the strongest of the three living in King's Landing, showed vulnerability. But he could only find solace in a brothel. I like, too, how they touched upon his regret for killing Lucerys, which was also hinted at in the season one finale. We briefly saw Hugh Hammer in episode one, but we had his full introduction in this one. If you haven't read Fire and Blood, get ready because this character will have great significance and his journey is going to be an interesting one. I think the casting here too was also well done. The acting in House of the Dragon has always been good, but in episode two, we had some standout performances. It was Reese Iffens' best work and he was given some great material too. This was my favorite Otto episode, from his disgust with Aegon to the regretful, forlorn way he remembered Viserys. Did you never think of your father, his forbearance, his judiciousness, his, his dignity? Tom Glynn Carney, who I felt stole episode one, was excellent again, and I've always been impressed with Olivia Cook's portrayal of Allison. My only slight problem with this episode is that since late season one, the Damon and Rhaenyra scenes feel a bit off to me. It's not due to the acting, but when they're together, it always feels like we're missing some context, as if a scene before the one we're watching was edited out. But overall, this was an excellent episode. I'm really looking forward to next week, which looks like a build-up to the Battle of Rook's Rest that we'll see the week following it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button. And if you're interested in more on House of the Dragon and A Song of Ice and Fire, listen to Caraxes and subscribe. I want to thank everyone for watching, and I'll see you soon.